The issue before us is not just polarization. It's polarization that is mapped onto the party system such that the two parties systematically become bearers of these differences on central public policy issues. And so the question, one of the questions before us is, is it a good thing or a bad thing that the likely nominees, of the likely nominees of the two political parties, one is, one has said publicly that we should remain in Iraq for a hundred years, and the other that we should get out of Iraq in 16 months. Uh, is it a good thing for the polity that the two political parties are so starkly divided on an issue of such central significance? And there are many others. Uh, is it a good thing or a bad thing for the country that one political party fervently believes the tax cuts pay for themselves and the other does not? Uh, it was Richard Nixon who famously declared, we are all Keynesians now, at precisely the moment when that was ceasing to be the case. Uh, you know, I could go on about Hegel if I wanted to, but I won't. Okay, let me, uh, you know, so l let me just say very briefly what I, you know, what I prepared to say the, this morning. In our study, uh, stepping back from the details, we explored four principal explanations for increased partisan polarization. If you want an easy mnemonic, you can think of them as the four Ds. Divisive leaders, I will say no more about that. Divided followers, that's the second. Demographic change is the third. And dysfunctional institutions. Those are the big four. There are others, but those are first and foremost. Our project suggested analytically that there was some truth to all of those hypotheses and scholars argument, argued about the weight to be attached to those four. In our concluding chapter for this volume, Pietro Nivola and I focused on the dimension most amenable to intentional change, namely the role of institutions and therefore the possibilities for institutional reform. And we offered a long laundry list of suggestions concerning the following six institutional areas of American government. Electoral processes, first. Second, congressional rules, how, con how Congress does its business. Third, how the President of the United States uh, conducts him or herself in the executive branch. Uh, fourth, the judiciary. Fifth, federalism, an important institutional feature of our institutions. And finally, the, the media, which we do treat as a quasi-public quasi and quasi-governmental institutions.